some words in that ad that will resonate with the ideal candidate. If you are in a fast paced growing business, you need to put that, all right? Because the people who are fast paced and are looking for that challenge, you've got a better chance they're gonna be hooked in, they're gonna be pulled into your ad, all right? You're still gonna get status shots that reply, but at least you're, you're putting words out there that will resonate with somebody and they may, they may be more likely to apply, whereas if you've just got a really bland vanilla ad that doesn't give you a clue about anything, they're probably just gonna keep reading. Because this is a gazillion. Short sure. company name, address, email, right. fax when number. When you advertise the position, uh, where do you advertise? We've talked about this. Career Builders, Craigslist, Indeed, uh, right. social media. When you're media, looking at a resume, you wanna look at, do they have an objective on their resume? All right. I am amazed at how many resumes have an objective that has absolutely nothing to do with the position I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Nothing, not even in the same industry. Right. That one's in the no pile, unless it's an administrative um, assistant. Skin for keywords in their resume from the experience and skills that you wanted. What was the size of their prior employers? I find this is critical in a lot of cases. You might have somebody that's got every one of the qualifications. Let's say I'm looking for an HR manager for a company that's their first manager They've got 80 people and they're starting to feel growing pains and they need somebody to manage the people and the benefits and deal with all the macro stuff that comes up and uh, all the regulations. And you get all these resumes and they were, they're proud. They managed a $1.25 billion worldwide company. They managed the whole HR effort. You know, they were global. They had all of the stuff. Well, those to me are the clipboard and whistle people. Now, if I've got a big global company, well, that's great, but most of our clients here in Delaware are not like that. And that person, they're not doing the do. They haven't done the do hands on down in the trenches for a long time. They're used to delegating everything out and overseeing massive things. Before you schedule an interview, I always think it's a good idea to telephone screen them. Don't waste your time bringing them in if you haven't talked to them. If you need somebody to handle clients and customer service on the phone, you wanna make sure they got a decent phone voice. They don't have marbles in their mouth yeah. and that you yeah, can understand them. You tell them a little bit about the company and you let them know what the salary range is. And I'll say it's somewhere in the When you're developing oh. your interview questions, you need to be prepared before you go into that interview. Don't think you're gonna walk in and interview somebody and those questions are just gonna miraculously pop into your head what you're gonna ask that person. So you want to have some written questions. You want to make sure you're going to be consistently asking them to each candidate. Um, and, and make sure you don't forget something important. You get talking about something else and then they leave and you're like, oh shoot, I forgot to ask what hours. And it allows you to be consistent with everybody. Which is you want to focus your design of questions on the candidate's skills, education, and training. Remember, you want to hear them tell you. All right, your duties, if you're doing the interviewing, is to find out what the candidates have done what they've done well, and what they like to do. Those are your three criteria, mm -hmm. and you're gonna get it from stories. Mm -hmm. And you look at how they might fit into your company, because that's a big piece of it. It's like a common interviewing mistakes, probably the biggest one is less 80-20 rule. They should be doing 80% of the talking, you're doing 20%. Uh, a lot of times people will be struggling with an answer, and for those of us who are that high D, high I, we wanna help them out, we wanna yeah, give them exactly. the answer. Jump right in and give them the answer and finish their sentence. Do not do that. Because you've just put words in their mouth that are the words you want to decide here. Be sure you know what questions you can Real ask. secret of an employment application, they have to sign it. And there's a little blurb above their signature that attests what they're telling you is the truth. And if it isn't, you can fire them. You can lie all you want on a resume, but they don't sign that thing. So right. you can't stand on it. But if you find out later they lied on that application and their resume that they assigned the application, um, and you want to avoid yes or no answers. So if you form a question, make sure it doesn't have a yes or no answer because that one can just die right there. Right. You want questions that are going to give you real life past examples. Two of you want to get some stories from these candidates that will display their skills and, and traits. So an example of questions to begin with is give me an example of a time you were proud of something you did at work. Let them know when you'll make the hiring decisions. After the job, you only do a background check after you've extended a job offer. So you send them an, you can, um, I usually send an offer letter that spells out the job, spells out salary, spells out working, where you're gonna work, start date, and um, 
and I say this is contingent on successfully passing the background check. You, but make sure what you're checking matches the job. Um, but don't do it until you've offered them a position um, and they've accepted. The criminal, if if you can relate what's on the criminal report to the job, I mean, you saw me this criminal report came back with X, we have to rescind that off. Always ask the question, would you retire? You would say, if they were really good, every one of us would say, I would retire. Oh, definitely. Right? But the line people hide behind is, it's company policy. The guiding principle has to be, the best predictor of a person's performance on the job is their past performance.